Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget from NYC CNC. So it's been great to be back in Ohio and I've started shooting with a new group of folks and the sort of word got around that I run a machine shop and one of the guys said to me the other day, hey, do you think you could make a little stamp of my logo? He makes, uh, I think, Kydex holsters. And I said, yeah, absolutely, send it over, thinking I have no idea. Uh, I'm not a stamp or die or tool and die type guy like that. But I figured, you know, hey, let's give it a shot. So this Wednesday widget, we're gonna go through, he sent me a DWG file that had some problems. So we're gonna go through how I took that and in SolidWorks fixed it pretty quickly and how we got it into the shape we needed. And then what I did first was I machined this out of W1 and uh, I'll, here's the zoom up close into that. And I took it over to him and he said, oh, that's, that's amazing, that's awesome. But I was actually sort of thinking it could be a engraved uh, outline that we could stamp in and it would do the trace of this logo. And I said, oh, totally, absolutely fine. You know, the, from my opinion, most of the work was already done. So um, we'll go through that process in SolidWorks, but what I did is I made this little aluminum guy here um, and we'll zoom in here to take a look. And what um, I made out of aluminum, I would like to make it out of tool steel, but today we're gonna do it out of aluminum because I'll be honest, I'm nervous that I will break the tool with my tools with tool steel and I wanna um, at least get this video done. Then I'll probably try it out of tool, tool steel and, and let you know how it goes. But the crazy thing is, as you can see, it looks awesome, this little wood block. I don't have any Kydex, um, but I think it'll do fine because you can either heat up the die or the stamp itself or the Kydex, so it won't, um, it won't need to be that um, high tonnage, I guess would be the way to describe it because the, one of them will be malleable or if it's heated up on the stamp, it'll actually melt a little. Uh, but I think this is gonna work pretty darn well, but I was just shocked. I mean, when you look at this little wood block, I said, hey, that looks pretty good. So. Not that hard to do at all in the Tormach. Uh, some, tri some tricks to it in both uh, SolidWorks and then in Sprute Cam, I'll walk you through the toolpath. So let's dive right in. Here is the DWG file that I received from the customer. This is not too uncommon. You see this, that's perfect. That's exactly what I want. This, nightmare. Um, and I don't know enough about vector graphics to know why that happens. But here's the thing, there's two ways to fix this. I'm gonna show you uh, in a second how I tweaked it. The real way to fix this, <laughs> go to Fiverr or uh, Elance. Fiverr is basically $5. Now, they, they kind of nickel and dime you, so it's 10 or 15 by the time you get it back in a vector format and in, in reasonable time frame. But um, and Elance is just an outsourcing thing in general. But there are bajillions of people on either of these sites that for some amount of money, 10 or 15 bucks probably, maybe less, will fix this for you. That is a huge win for me. But if you want to do it yourself, and I actually ended up tweaking it a little bit even after I got it back, it's not hard. Here's how I would do it. I'm gonna go ahead and select all this stuff. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here, sort of in the middle, and hold down Control, and just deselect one of them. Um, I can leave that, sorry. And hit Delete key. So I got kind of a midpoint there. I'm just gonna take my three-point arc, choose the this is a nightmare here. Yeah, choose the last one here. Choose the last one there, and then just put it right through there. And then come in here and go ahead and delete that guy, and boom, fixed. Um, you can go clean up this guy, and is it absolutely perfect? No. Will the customer ever notice? No. So you can do that. You can kind of see that would be maybe one curve, and then from there to there might be a curve. It's as much time as you want to get it done uh, correctly. What I then did um, is, so what I, let's see here, I... Again, this is where my SOLIDWORKS skills are a bit of a, of a hack. Um, I basically only did this, I'm trying to show you on the left side, my SOLIDWORKS slows down a lot when I'm running my screen recording software. Sorry, folks. Um, well, I'll talk you through it here. Is I, I drew a line across there, that gives me the midpoint of that line. I then cut this arc in half so that I only have an arc that goes from about there to the middle. What I then did, oh, there we go, okay. Now, line, should be able to do boom, boom. Now, watch this. I can trim, 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 trim. Okay, and then I can delete all this stuff, and then you'll fix, you'll have fixed this. Um, of course, I am not. And then draw a line from there to your top. That's probably gonna crash the computer too. 
Um, basically, once that's done, then you just click this mirror entities and whatever you fixed on the left will be mirrored onto the right. And then you've got a, a symmetrical fixed uh, program uh, or, or CAD file. So let's hop over to my model. Um, took me, a, it didn't take me long, but it took me a second to figure out what I wanted to do. Now the idea here is something like a knife edge or point, uh, which is fine anyways, because it's actually a little bit easier to machine and have it look precise. So what did I do? Let's rewind here. By the way, there's no reason this is on a one inch uh, block. That's just sort of a legacy to when I wasn't sure how big he wanted it. So we have our little block. We import um, our sketch which you here you guys can see if we actually edit that that's how i fixed it so you can get an idea of how many how few or how many arcs it took and then you can see they is mirrored if you look at how uh the dots all are so that gives us the solid but remember he wanted it um he wanted it so that he can push it down to sort of trace it so all you got to do is use the shell tool which is right here and it's super easy, and it makes easy work of leaving, in this case, 150 thou, excuse me, 15 thou um, around the edge. So look at that. And then all I did was add two 30 degree chamfers, and boom, we're done. Let's keep right on going. Sprut cam. So we're going to use a half inch uh, rougher to get rid of most of the material, which if we simulate it up to that point, uh, let's see here gives us that. Then I'm gonna come in here with a 1 16th tool and do a water line. Now these feeds and speeds are not great, but I'm like almost 0% focused on productivity and efficiency here. I just wanna get it cut without breaking the tool. So 5,100 RPMs, two IPMs, pretty darn conservative. Yeah, one, 10 thou depth, which is um, three passes and pretty narrow yeah, only 12 thou step over. So this is probably like a five, 10 minute op. Yeah, four minutes, okay, I don't care. Um, and then we're gonna switch to that, which is a one millimeter tool and 5,100 one inch a minute, only six thou step down and only four thou with the cut, very conservative. Um, and then we do, I was experimenting to with a chamfer. It's a 30 degree tool. And I did a finish line rest, just just as is, with the depth set to the, the depth of that curve, which is or the chamfer, which is negative ten thou. So that's the depth right there, and that did fine. But if we look at what it leaves us with, it leaves us. And, and don't worry, um, Cam doesn't always simulate crazy well when it's this small because of the nature of how graphics cards use you know, triangles and shapes to. To render so don't worry about that but you can see that we're left with some material here so again the easiest way I thought to, to get rid of that was to create some 2d contours and what I did was I just adjusted how far down it went with step over so what that does is it moves the tool further down but it also moves it out so that you're actually going to remove and if we just take a look here actually I'll, I'll rapid simulate through one of them and see there you go. See, it just took away some of that material. Um, I don't know why I just did that. That's a mistake. Uh, oh, Sprout Cam, you are testing my patience. I don't mind that there are quirks because every cam, frankly, has them. But damn it, I closed this file yesterday. It was fine. Why, when I opened this morning, does it do that? The fix is it was starting the tool down inside the part. So it was like as it started, it was feeding it from inside the part, which had created that crash. And the fix is that it added some overhang. So you change that to zero and it works. So I kind of lost track of where I was. So I'm sorry, um, but darn it, um, that uh, annoys me, <laughs> especially as I'm uh, having a good time with HSM Express. So as, we, as you can see, what we've now got is most of the material removed around this cutting edge of the stamp. I didn't go down all the way here because it doesn't matter. And yeah, so that's basically it. Let's uh, head over to the machine and uh, cut this. Okay, we cut some air there. Sorry, I didn't even bother to reduce the stock size and screw. This isn't quite an inch here, but tool 31, just cleaning it up. I, I lied, I think I said I was using a half inch rougher, but I forgot I did change this to a finish end mill. 
such a small amount of material and there was no need to do an extra tool change from a rougher to a finisher. Um, so it should finish up here. Now, let's see, I just threw a GoPro on, uh, my new GoPro on the new tool changer. This, I think will be the first video debut of the tool changer. I have no idea. I haven't even set up the GoPro with the, um, you know, remote uh, viewer option on your iPhone or, or whatever. So I don't know if that was a good angle or not. We'll find out. And this is the 1 16th tool, which is quote unquote hogging <laughs> relative to the uh, one millimeter tool. This is a fair amount of cutting time here because again, we're taking it really easy. And uh, you know, I got to do some homework on, you know, this for example is a Chinese cheapo high speed steel that I actually had in a drawer left over from my tag today. So I got to think that that's just a fool's errand to think we're going to use that on W1, even though it's not that hard to machine, but um, it'll break or we'll rub or wear out. So I may end up, uh, well, we're gonna see how well this works in aluminum for now. I'm pretty psyched, I know I can do it. It's just a question of switching up the tooling to uh, get the job done. But hey, you know, the aluminum works. Uh, uh, there's a point of pride of being able to do this in W1, but uh, on the flip side, don't over-engineer things if they need not be. So let's fast forward through the rest of this 1 16th and I'll be back in a second when we switch to the one millimeter. Okay, one millimeter tool. I'll tell you, man, this tool changer has been rock solid. Uh, I was a little intimidated or annoyed having to do the dial in, you know, process. Not hard at all in the end. And I'm going to do a video on it where I'll show you, uh, you know, really like one trick that I had. But uh, really, really pleased with it. And you know, I stand by some of my reasons earlier of not, you know, it's a not things not free and the coolant line issue, but um, boy, it is gonna be great, especially now that we're busier, and uh, you know, for instance, Jared can run parts with the tool changer and be welding or doing uh, material prep or second off stuff or deburring or packaging, and uh, that's just, it's just gonna be a win. So, very, very happy with that. I don't think this one millimeter code is all that long. All it's really doing is uh, getting in the corners. You know, come to think of it, I should go back and look at the cam because I wonder how necessary it is. I guess it's easier, using this makes it a little bit easier on the engraver because we're removing some of the material here, but I bet if you were confident in your engraver, you could have it do the rest of this cleanup work. But the point here, at least for me right now, isn't isn't any sort of volume production or efficiency, but rather getting it cut, cut with a real nice quality. I'm gonna move the camera up a little. I'm not sure I like this angle. Hopefully that's better. I need to pick up a, I think it's a macro lens so I can have this camera way closer. You know, right now it's probably a little over 12 inches away, but I have focus problems, or I can't focus if I get closer. But I think that's what's really interesting uh, from a video perspective, is having that camera so you, you know, so that instead of this current shot, you know, the workpiece is filling up, you know, like one inch of your monitor. I want the workpiece to be like eight or 10 inches of your monitor, really close up. So I gotta work on that. Uh, Hopefully uh, we'll come up with something and you guys will enjoy that. Well, I think this is boring, so let's fast forward um, until we get to the engraver. And last, but certainly not least, we've got the uh, 30 degree 2L ink engraver. I 
again, I think it's fun to watch the machine when you really see chips flying and you get a feel for what's going on. This is pretty boring stuff. Let's fast forward through this and take a look at the end result and see how she works. Okay. Let's take her out of the vise and take a look. There we go. Uh, looks good. Let's get in better light so we can take a close look. Okay, here she is. Um, I would actually welcome any recommendations on a, a good macro lens. I wish I could zoom in way more, but I'll lose focus. This is a Canon 70D uh, DSLR, um, but you know. Looks great, let's uh, get a test. Okay, now I will admit that uh, wood is different than Kydex, which is different than you know heated Kydex, but let's just throw this on here and see what happens. Look at that. Now, oops, that was a little bit too heavy on the top. So let's, uh, let's see if we can try this again. That actually makes a difference. I should really have this thing centered in the part, but we're just having fun here. Again, a little bit heavy on one side, but uh, I guess I got lucky the first time I hit it, I got a really nice, uh, nice shape. Let's try it again. Yeah, that's better. Look at that. Pretty good, right? Not bad. So. Anyways, I think it's pretty cool. I'll let you guys know how it works out uh, for the customer with that Kydex and see if it works. And I'm gonna try to give this a whirl with tool steel and see what we get. So with that folks, I appreciate uh, your enthusiasm, the comments, the likes, the thumbs up and the shares. Take care folks, I will see you soon. I just realized, uh, curious to see when he calls me out on this, that I was uh, using the first mold, not the one we just machined. There should be the same, but um, just so there's no um, claims of of shenanigans and this actually is a little bit easier because it's tall enough it's not actually yeah, it's still a little bit off, off centered but the height makes it a little bit easier to hold yeah uh you know so i need to get this thing centered that's clear but still makes a real nice uh thing this would be great for leather anyways i'll uh, i'll stop rambling take care folks see you soon